Uh, hey everybody, Brent Schistel here. I'm a director of product management at Perforce and I'm excited to take you through virtual file sync with Helix Core. First thing I wanna call out with virtual file sync is there are three necessary components. One is the server. You can run that on any platform you want, but it needs to be on version 2023.1 or greater. Then you need a client, either P4 or P4V. This has to be a Windows-based client with what we've built so far. For P4V, you have to be running version 2023.2 or greater. And for P4, the command line client, you have to be at version 2023.1 or greater. And then we have this brand new client agent called P4 VFS, and you need to be running that on 2023.1 or greater. So assuming you've met all those prerequisites, let's then hop into P4V. So in P4V, it looks just like normal. I'm gonna create a new workspace. And here I'm just gonna name this thing Brent VFS. I am going to map it to an existing stream. And then I'm gonna hop over to the advanced tab. And now you'll see a new property called alt sync defined as only getting metadata when getting revisions. And this is exactly what we want. When we sync, we just want the metadata. We don't want the full file content. I'll say, okay, there, I have now created my new workspace. I am going to pop over to the workspace tab. I am going to select my folder and I am going to do a get latest. And here I'm actually going to get over 3000 files in a single operation. You can see the progress bar going a lot faster than you're probably used to, because again, we are only syncing metadata here, not syncing full file content. So we'll wait for this to finish here. And then I will show you what this looks like. All right, there we go. Full 3,444 files have been synced, metadata only. And you'll see first thing in P4V, there is a new badge for these files. These files now have a cloud next to them, a cloud icon, which shows these are not full, full files, let's say. They're just placeholders or stubs. And if I go look in Windows Explorer, File Explorer view, um, one thing you'll see here is I've got a new, well, what Microsoft or Windows refers to as cloud files provider. It's my workspace. I click on that and I can see same thing that I'm seeing in P4V and the workspace view I'm seeing now in Windows Explorer. And I'm looking at it from this official uh, cloud provider view. You'll see that every file and directory here has a cloud icon next to it. Again, this just means it's a placeholder. It's only metadata. If you look at the size, however, it's reporting an accurate size. So that's the, the, the giveaway. When you see the combination of a cloud and an accurate file size, we know it's just a placeholder. If I were to inspect one of these, uh, let's just go ahead and take this guy. And I'm gonna look at some properties. The interesting thing you see here is the size being reported is 32.8 megs. But if you look at the size on disk, you see zero bytes. Again, that's because it's only metadata. If I wanna look at this from the traditional view of a workspace, um, I could do that as well. So let me pull that up. Uh, let's see, what's the best way to get there? Let's go, this PC, local drive, users, B Schistel, Perforce, Brent VFS, there we go. So here are kind of two, actually three now, ways of viewing this on the screen. One is this, where is the workspace actually stored on my PC? The other is this file provider view in Windows Explorer. And then the other is P4V. Again, these are all just placeholders. So now if I were to actually double click on any of these, I need to go get the file content because I don't have it. So here we go, I'm gonna double click this guy. Now Windows throws up this progress bar to show me that, hey, I am going to the source, in this case, the Helix Core server, and I'm getting the file content back down so I can load it locally to the PC. In this case, it's a 3D object. So it's just gonna launch a 3D viewer program of my default choice here. And it's done everything it needs to do. It went to the server, it got the file content, and now it brought up my default app for loading these 3D file objects. And then it is showing me that particular object. So here I am, I can manipulate this any way I want to. I can make changes. Um, whatever I want to do from here. And if I go back, you'll see now, hey, look at that. 
the library has a green check mark because it was hydrated. And so now it is a full file, it's been hydrated. And the interesting thing here is if I inspect this and I look at the properties, I can see the size on disk now matches the size. Um, Windows does have some interesting menu options that exist here. Free up space is where I can take this and say, actually move it back to being metadata only again. So if I wanna do that, I can go ahead and it changed the file icon there. And what I did was I moved it back to being a placeholder. Um, similarly, we added our own um, icon for, or sorry, not icon, menu option for downloading. So you could say download files here. That's just another way to go get it instead of having to double click it. If I highlighted a bunch of them, we could have done that. Um, and then similarly, always keep on this device is like, hey, mark this thing as hot. Don't ever virtually sync it. I always get the full content, the metadata and the content. Um, so there's a quick spin on how to do things. One other thing that I wanna show you is in your system tray, you have a new icon. This is the P4 VFS client agent that's running. This thing will always be running. And uh, a couple of things, number one, you can just get an about screen. So this will tell you if you have to call support because you notice anything wrong with P4 VFS, you can get um, which exact version you're running here, the version string. Um, similarly, if you want to, let's say, uh, unregister a provider, you can do that as well here. Um, and then the other thing I guess I probably could have shown in this demo was we have a very uh, first pass at trying to show individual progress in terms of as we download files, what does it look like? So let me kind of take this and see what happens. There you go. There's a, an interesting, there's a two thing and my image came over here so you couldn't see it. Um, let's see if I can do, this will be a, an audio file. It's not gonna be very exciting, but you can see here again, another progress bar. Where this gets nice is if you're doing like a, fo a folder level uh, view. There we go, that was some audio. I don't know if you could hear it, but. Um, Okay, this is very small in terms of content, but let's go ahead and say download here. You can see the progress. It downloaded so fast that it didn't really um, give us much insight, but you can get file by file level progress in terms of what's being downloaded. And then last but not least, if you wanna unregister a, um, a workspace as a provider from a Windows perspective, you can do that as well. And I need to bring that window up because it's hiding. And let's see here, let's try that again. There we go. So if I were to hit remove provider here, uh, it would make this workspace disappear from being um, an official cloud files provider from a Windows perspective. So that's a spin through the first pass of VFS, of virtual file sync using this new P4 VFS component. Uh, again, Windows only to start, and this was our first tech preview release. We hope this video helped, and enjoy your day.